December 14, 2012, both the Department of Homeland Security and FEMA were conducting a course entitled, and you can see it here, Planning for the Needs of Children in Disasters. You can see right here, this is from the State of Connecticut, the Department of Emergency Services and Public Protection, Emergency Management and Homeland Security. I'm not making this up. As a matter of fact, I will provide the link to not only this site, but also the link that we're going to go to from this site so you can get a screen capture and you can record it before they take this down. But you can see right here, it was scheduled for December 14th, the very day of the Sandy Hook tragedy, from 9 a.m. to 4 p.m., the exact same time in the exact same general vicinity, and we'll talk about exactly where that was in a second, but it's FEMA L-366, that's the course number, Planning for the Needs of Children in Disaster. When you click on this link right here, it takes you to this page. The goal of this course, it says, is to enable participants to improve their community's mitigation and emergency operations plan specifically regarding the needs of children. The course will provide them with the information needed to address the unique needs of children prior to, during, and following disasters. Where was this class to meet? We'll take a look at this down here. Location, 2800 Main Street, Bridgeport, Connecticut. Now where does that take you? This is Bridgeport, Connecticut. Peg A is the location in which FEMA would conduct their course on the same day at the same time the shootings occurred. The two locations were connected by the same road, a mere 20 minutes drive to the north. Some people appear to have known the imminent future on that fateful day. FEMA had arrived in New York on Monday night, ready for a bioterror drill. Spokesman Tom Kenny to Dan Rather. To be honest with you, uh, we arrived on uh, late Monday night and went into action on Tuesday morning. And not until today did we get a full opportunity to work uh, uh, the entire site other than the spot at church and day to which we were deployed. And Rudy Giuliani, mayor of New York, tells ABC's Peter Jennings that he was aware the towers would be coming down. What is going on now is a massive uh, rescue effort. Do you believe it's hundreds or thousands? I, I, I really don't. I really, I really don't want to say right now, Peter. I, I think it's going to be ho a horrible number. I, I saw people jumping out of the World Trade Center. I saw some of the firefighters who I know going in, into the building. So. And we were in a building in which we were trapped for about 10, 15 minutes. And we set up a headquarters at 75 Barclay Street, which was right there with the police commissioner, the fire commissioner, mm -hmm. the head of emergency management. And we were operating out of there when we were told that the World Trade Center was going to collapse. The World Trade Center was going to collapse. It was going to collapse. It was going to collapse. Similarly, Larry Silverstein, New leaseholder of the World Trade Center regretfully declared that a decision was made to pull Building 7 by the end of the day, the last structure added to the World Trade Center complex. Let's hear Mr. Silverstein's actual words, delivered for our benefit in the 2002 PBS documentary, America Rebuilds. I remember getting a call from the uh, fire department commander telling me that they were not sure they were going to be able to contain the fire. I said, you know, we've had such terrible loss of life. Maybe the smartest thing to do is, is pull it. Uh, and they made that decision to pull. And then we watched the building collapse. Blast, shoot, blow, and pull are terms used in the demolition industry to refer to bringing down buildings, bridges, and other structures. Because I actually blew the hospital down that I was born in. Uh, originally, we had figured to shoot it and let it drop straight down. Then, watch demolition dynamics attempt a big blast. And from Ground Zero's own post-disaster wrecking crew. By mid-December, the Department of Design and Construction had leveled World Trade Center buildings four and five. 
Oh, we're getting ready to pull building six. Silverstein, a commercial real estate tycoon with international political connections, acquired a 99-year lease on the World Trade Center complex in the spring of 2001. Throughout the summer, he reworked the insurance policies on his new property, making sure that it was covered for acts of terrorism. Explicit in the lease agreement was Silverstein's right to rebuild the complex if it were destroyed. After 9-11, Mr. Silverstein fought his insurers in court to obtain double his policy limits for the destruction of his property, maintaining that the double hijacking constituted two disasters caused by terrorists, not just one. He won and was awarded over $7 billion, a magnificent return on his original $15 million investment. My first reaction is to think about the families uh, of those people, the tragedy, the magnitude of it. Um, however, I firmly believe that we should rebuild. Just in the last few seconds, another building, building number seven, one of the buildings uh, in support of the World Trade Center towers has collapsed. World Trade 7, functioning as the command center for the complex, housed giant diesel backup and oxygen systems, the mayor's protected emergency bunker, and offices for the CIA, Secret Service, Department of Defense, and Securities and Exchange Commission. Its other tenants were insurance companies, brokerages, and banks. No plane hit Building 7, but at 5.20 p.m. on September 11th, it collapsed in a heap on the ground. Some damage to Building 7 is said to have been caused by debris from Tower 1, though this New York Times article tells us Building 7 burned like a giant torch, the only visuals that exist are of unidentified smoke and a few small fires. Compare this to the wallop sustained by World Trade Center 3, 4, 5, and 6. Positioned right below the towers, damage to the surrounding World Trade Center buildings was infinitely worse. Still, the structures held up. But somehow, rescue workers knew that Building 7 would fall. You hear that? Keep your eye on that building. It'll be coming down soon. A 47-story skyscraper, Building 7 folded neatly in six and a half seconds. A textbook descent right into its footprint. Silverstein Properties now tells us that its owner was referring to the team of firefighters inside the building when he spoke of the decision to pull, pulling the firemen out of harm's way. However, there were no firefighters in Building 7, according to FEMA, NIST, and Fire Chief Frank Fellini. They were ordered out at 11.30 that morning. Six hours later, the building came down. You know, we heard this, this sound that sounded like a clap of thunder. Turned around, it looked like there was um, a shockwave ripping through the building and the windows all busted out and, you know, it was, it was horrifying. About a second later, the bottom floor caves out and uh, the building followed after that. Radio host Alex Jones notes the mark of a classic implosion. This is a photo taken one second into Building 7's collapse. Notice the crimp. If we look at other controlled demolitions, we see that they first blow one of the central columns so the building falls in on itself. If you don't do this, the building falls outward and can damage surrounding structures. Building 7 had a classic crimp or wedge. Its central column was blown out first so it didn't structurally damage buildings just a few feet away from it. Remember the mayor's emergency bunker? Ensconced on the 23rd floor of Building 7, it was retrofitted with super glass, water, oxygen, and its own generator. But Mayor Giuliani chose to find emergency shelter elsewhere on September 11th. Why Building 7? Even the media and its experts were confused. The History Channel interviews structural engineer Ramon Gilsons, 
who points out the obvious crimp and even speaks of the implosion. Engineers are not just focusing on the Twin Towers. The most disturbing structural event was not that the Twin Towers fell, but that Tower 7, ignited by flying debris, fell due to fire alone. Building 7 was a steel frame building, and it's the first steel frame building that has collapsed due to fire. The failure of the building was an implosion. So it failed completely different than Towers 1 and 2, in which the floors failed first. Why Building 7? Let's ask the question again. As the WTC Command Center, was it the hub for the 9-11 plan? Also, in six and a half seconds, lost forever were thousands of SEC case files on corporate fraud, including those relating to the notorious activities of giants WorldCom and Enron. A few indictments for stock fraud, but what of the $70 billion California electricity swindle? It disappeared.